What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video. Some tips, tricks, and pointers for this whole DJ thing. Right now we're going to discuss the sync button. I know it's controversial. I know a lot of people don't use it. They swear it off. They don't even know what it does, but they just have some ideas to what sync is doing and they don't want to have any part of it. Then some people are just all on board with sync and they just use it non-stop so I'm somewhere in the middle leaning towards you know I use it when necessary I use it as a tool I don't use it as a crutch um, I've been DJing for 30 plus years so I started out on wax I've been using wax way more than I've been using mp3 so I got the experience and I think I can give an informed opinion about sync and at the same time I want to show you people how I use it in my workflow so um, I use it mainly with my controller. I don't use it with turntables. Turntables, it kind of becomes, like you can still use it with turntables to a degree, but it's not the same uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, mainly because uh, turntables have a little flutter, wow and flutter, meaning basically the inconsistency of the motor to consistently spin at uh, whatever speed you have it set at because it's an analog device now a controller or a CDJ or something like that they stay in they stay on time you know they don't lose time they don't have variations in their uh, rotations so they're a little easier they're a lot more easier to use sync with so sync I use the simple simple sync version of sync and Serato DJ Pro I don't use um, smart sync Smart Sync requires you to have your beat grid set up, and I don't do beat gridding. It, it's, I just don't have time to do it. I haven't really experimented with it, so it is not really useful to me. Now, there's Simple Sync, which also can rely on or can utilize uh, your beat grids, but I don't use beat grids. I use Simple Sync in the, probably the most simplest way possible, but it does make a difference in my workflow and it allows me to do things that I normally wouldn't be able to do unless I grew another hand or something like that so I'll show you as we get into the settings how to set up simple sync or how I do it and try to give you a little bit of information about what the options are so you can choose what you want to use but what I do is I use it mainly with my controller and I use it to match up the BPMs um, Simple Sync gives you the option to match up BPMs and transients. Transients are those spikes that you see in your waveform when you're looking at it and you see that you can tell where the kick and the, the hi-hat are or even a closed hi-hat. Well, all those little spikes are transients. And what Simple Sync can try to do is to match those up. Well, that doesn't always work great because transients come in different phrases of the song. So um, you may have a transient where the hi-hat is hitting, you know, maybe on the fourth note or it might be a kick on the first note or whatever. And when you try to rely on the transient matching of Simple Sync, you'll see that it doesn't always fall into place. So things don't sound right. But what I do is I use the BPM matching. So I use it to match my BPMs quickly without having to fiddle around with the pitch control to get it where I need to be. So I can just hit the button and the song that I'm loading on to the incoming deck is gonna be matched up with what's already playing. And then I manually drop in the song. So keep that in mind, sync does not line everything up for you perfectly it doesn't drop it in correctly for you it doesn't do any of that you still have to have some skill on that level so um, without any further ado let's just get into the software take a look at it and I can show you exactly what I'm doing with sync when I'm uh, DJing alright so now we are here looking at the software this is a Serato DJ Pro and I am gonna go through my settings up here and down here under the DJ preferences the first tab you have the sync mode and sync preferences so here's where you can either turn sync off completely you can set it to simple sync simple sync or smart sync uh, simple sync is the one I use and the one I'm going to be talking about here this is the one that basically it does two things it matches the BPM and it matches the transients from the WAV file. So now if we were to look at the WAV file on 
one of these uh, beats I got up here right now. You can see where the kick is. You can see where the snare is. You can see where some hi-hats are and other sounds. All these are transients in the waveform. So Simple Sync, when it tries to match up the transients, it doesn't always do it well. What it does sometimes, it will match up the kick with maybe uh, another transient like a hi-hat, a close hi-hat, which is what that might be, or it may find something else, but it doesn't always do it right. And that's why I only use Simple Sync to, I use it for the BPM matching. So when your BPMs are matched up, that's when you save some time from fiddling around with your pitch control and you can just worry about dropping it in correctly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Sync does not automatically line the songs up correctly. The transients don't match up. It just does not do a good job with it. So an example of this would be like on the left deck, I have this song called Raising the Bar by this great artist named Logistical Styles and I have on the right deck another song from their artist Logistical Styles called That's The Way, the way It Is. Uh, one is 96, one is 100 BPM. So um, that's not close enough for me to even try to pretend like I can hit play at the same time on both of those songs and they'll be lined up. If I do, I'll get something similar to this. All right, so Let's hear it. that that was both of them playing together from the same start point at the same time and they automatically were off. The first song sounds like this. All right, that's at 96 BPM. Second song sounds like this. That's at 100 BPM. So now that you know what the songs sound like and you realize that they're not going to be compatible right off the block, you can either mess around with the pitch control and move the slider on the right deck until you can get it up to the matching BPM and then everything's good because if you start from the beginning, you get two songs in sync with each other with no problem. The problem I have is, say I want to, I'm bringing in the second song on the right deck. If I want to move that pitch control, it's only going to adjust the pitch on that deck. So as I'm adjusting it, you hear what happens? They go off. They go off. I'm trying to get that song to the correct speed so when I transition to it, it will sound proper, but because they're not linked up with each other you know I need to have another set of hand another hand to m grab the pitch control and still be skillful enough to do it at the same rate that I'm doing on the right deck and a third hand to move the crossfader so this is where simple sync comes in to uh, play for me so let's go back and reset everything to where it was so I got a song that's 96 BPM playing I got this beat playing and I want to switch into the song that's 100 BPM. So I load it onto this deck and what I do is I hit the sync button. So now it's synced up and that 100 BPM song has been switched to 96. So when I do decide to play it on the right count and now they're playing at the same speed and the best part is since I'm moving into this song on the right deck, I can move the pitch up and the song on the left deck will move in relation to that as well. So my hand is free to hit that crossfader to make the transition. So that's what that's how I'm using sync. I'm using it to make my transitions a lot better so I can be able to jump from um, songs that have tempos that really don't match with each other. but it will work during the transition and then when I hit that crossfade I'm into the new song at the right speed so once again we'll try one more time let's bring this back and then maybe even another beat alright so this one that I'm loading up Eclectic Playground it's a simple beat intro like the first one but it's obviously faster right and it's faster even more so because I got the pitch already adjusted up so I'm going from a 100 BPM to 96 BPM. So, no, I'm going from 96 to 104. 
So let's play this beat. All right, so that's going. Hit sync over here. One, two, three, and. And they're synced in, all right. So now if I wanna speed it up, I can do that. And what's cool, I can even, like, on this right deck, I ran out of space. So I can, on my pitch, so I can still pick it up here from the left deck. And still bring it up. So they're both linked in with each other. And then I make the switch over to the right, the correct deck. So now I have this song playing at 101 BPM. So let's say I got that going. Now I want to go and play something that might be a little bit slower. So let's get this one. Hit sync. Beats are synced up. The BPM is synced up. And so now I can just go to one and. But that song is so much faster than what it should be playing at. So I'm gonna bring that pitch down and because they're synced, everything will move in relation to each other. Notice the BPM on both decks. And I've made the switch into this third song. And you can do that all throughout the night. Now, the one thing I will um, suggest is you pay attention to where your actual pitch slider is. Because when you're doing all this, um, all the syncing and moving the fader back and forth, the pitch will become, the actual pitch on your deck will become out of sync with what you sing on the screen and ultimately what you see on the screen is what you should be going by because that's what the actual pitch is um, so that's why I don't do pitch uh, I don't do sync all throughout the night because you know you do sync with like four or five songs in a row your pitches is going to be really out of whack with each other and there are things you can do to uh, not get stuck in that you can take a break and then mix a song in correctly and then using just the natural native pitch on the controller and do that for one or two songs and then you're back into um, your correct pitch range but from there I would say I just use the basic simple sync where I'm matching BPM I don't worry about the transients because that's really going to throw you off um, if you go into your settings you see that there are some options for your sync preferences. You can choose to snap to beat grid, and that basically just turns the beat grids on. Uh, once you turn that on, you'll be able to see the beat grids within the song. I don't have beat grids, so you don't. Well, there's that's a beat grid line, um, and then probably if you moved it a little further, you see some more. But I don't usually use that. The other option I don't use, but it's there, is maintain sync on track load which will mean that, so let's turn that on. Go back in here, so I've got sync turned on. Say this deck is playing. The next song I load, because I have that box checked, regardless of what it is, I'm gonna do something really drastic like 130 BPM match with a 96 BPM song. Very unrealistic, but when I load it because I have that box checked, guess what? that song, the BPM got matched up. Even though it did some really hyper pitch type negative 25, I mean, it still did it. And the same thing would go for any other song. You know, it would match the, the BPM automatically. Some people do that. To me, that's just like too much and that's where you end up using sync um, to your detriment. It's not really being helpful to you. So I keep that off. Then there's tempo slider effects all sync decks, which is something I showed you in the last screen shot or last um, picture because I had the, temp the tempo slider on each deck affected each deck. Normally if that box wasn't checked, the only tempo slider that would matter would be the one that is considered the slave. The slave is the one that you're bringing in. It's the one that you hit sync on. So with this box checked, I can 
change the tempo using either tempo slider. So in that last example, I kind of ran out of space on my pitch slider uh, that's actually on the deck because I had it all way pitched up, but the software thought I was probably like, I think at maybe uh, plus five. So I was able to go to the other deck and move that pitch slider up to get a little bit more um, headroom in my pitch. So those are the two main things that uh, I like to bring up when I'm talking about pitch or when I try to tell people why I use pit, um, sync. So it's for the BPM matching and the syncing of the deck. So I can match the BPM very quickly just by hitting that uh, sync button. I can, you know, just hit sync and the BPMs will match. Um, and then the decks are linked up. So regardless of what I do with either pitch control, they keep both decks in sync. So I can make these transitions from, it might be a genre like um, maybe some 80s rock, which is stuck in a certain tempo, or I'm, I'm stuck in that tempo and I want to come down to maybe something like an R&B into a uh, trap type sound you know I don't, there's a lot of options you could do that but sync is a tool that helps you get the job done and basically at the end of the day that's what i want everybody to understand that it's it's there you paid for it it came with equipment it came with your software go ahead use it if you don't like it then just turn it off but don't just assume that it's going to be the computer DJing for you because you can have sync on and you can very easily screw up your mixes. So with all that, um, just go out there, practice it, learn it, uh, get used to it, get comfortable with it, and stop making you know excuses for why you don't use something that you don't understand. Just put the time in and the effort. And with that, you know, keep spinning in. Look out for the next video. Please subscribe. You know, spread the word. Share these videos. Uh, I hope to continue to keep putting out a weekly video. Probably I'm going to try to keep the schedule of every Sunday dropping a video um, and just putting it out there. So subscribe, keep spinning, and come back for more.